but the Shakespeare rhythm, you get uh, boom ba, boom ba, boom ba, boom ba, boom ba, uh, boom ba, boom ba, boom ba. That's the foundation. If you took away all of Shakespeare's words, you know, you could kind of get a sense of the rhyme on the floor. So I'm the king of rock. There is none higher. Sucker MC will call me Sock. Okay, y'all ready? Yeah. I say y'all ready? That scene in the, in, the, in the 90s was a really vibrant scene. It was a lot of music, some theater, some visual arts, a lot of things going on, a lot of dance groups, clubs. This is a lot of vibrant energy. And I was a young man. I was in my early 20s. So at that time, it's like, you know, we might go see a show with Robert Henry Johnson or perform in that show. Then we had a late night set at the Kennel Club or DNA Lounge or Slim's. Then we would go sit in with Michael Franti at the, you know, whatever club at midnight. Then we would go to the upper room or somewhere else at two in the morning. It was that kind of thing. In some ways, it was very special, but it wasn't special in terms of every generation has those kind of things, that scene from which artists emerge. Well, I was in this group called Midnight Voices, and this group was kind of like a a grateful dead of hip hop. We had dancers, we had like theatrical scenes, we had a full band. We would perform and we got really popular in the Bay Area. And so our contemporaries in hip hop were like Michael Franti, um, Digital Underground, The Coup, um, Dell, Funky Homo Sapiens, Souls of Mischief. We were doing all these performances and really packing it into these clubs, man. We were playing, we were trying to get like three, four, five hundred people into a club. Like, it's a lot of people. So we had a big following locally. We were like a, a Bay Area hip hop institution in the early mid 90s, you know? But I start to want, I want to, I was craving a longer form of story, you know, because in that thing, you're doing an hour set um, and you got, you know, what is that? That's 10 songs or 15 songs, whatever, right? So I was starting to look for a way to kind of like, use rhyming but kind of like start to like tell longer tales that people could kind of sit and listen in and feel it with their body but not necessarily like dancing or like trying to freak up on some girl like getting drunk not that everyone was doing that but you know what I mean it's a party atmosphere so narrative can exist in that but it started to feel limited to me so I started to take these little bit scenes that we were doing on these stages and I started to experiment with kind of like stretching them out a little bit you know what I mean to, to 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes the other thing that happened is one of our dancers, Robert Henry Johnson, he also started getting big in the Bay Area. And so he started using our music and doing these kind of like kind of modern jazz, kind of like postmodern ballets with hip hop music. We start to connect with like the Grant world and like we start to then move hip hop rhymes, the narrative part of hip hop rhymes into the theater. But what I didn't realize is that there were other people doing not that, but their slant on it in dotted place throughout the country. Hip hop theater kind of started with like a handful of people in different places that were just kind of, they were kind of hip hop kids and they were like actors or hip hop kids and dancers. Or they, you know what I mean? Again, that's a dime a dozen now, but back then it's like, to be a rapper and be an actor, that was very rare back in the, like the early 90s. There's a reflection that theater needs to have. And that reflection helps us understand, not through explanation, but hopefully through story and narrative action, what is happening and then what happened. So even hip hop theater, you know, we started developing hip hop theater. That was like the 90s, really early 2000s. But we were reflecting on hip hop from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. You know what I mean? So it's almost like you needed like 10 or 15 years before you can kind of begin telling the story of what it was. And the other thing about the 90s in the Bay Area, we were coming off a very crazy time, a violent time in the 80s and early, I'll say about 84 to 92, 93. This was like the crack cocaine era. It was a very violent time. But it was starting to come out of that. You know, Clinton was president. Things, you know, Rodney King happened, but then the truce happened amongst gangs in L.A. Um, and in Bay Area, we had our smaller truce like that between Film and Hunters Point. And it started to be a slightly more peaceful time. And so, again, people were looking to express themselves and reflect. And we had a treasure chest of stories, painful, joyous, that we had lived through as teenagers through the 80s. Did it make any sense? And so it was a time now to kind of 
ex express these things, you know, um, whether you were a singer, whether you were a poet, um, whether you were a filmmaker. So a lot of brilliant artists came out of that. It was an explosive mm -hmm. time. It's a hopeful time because we're coming through this like real rough period um, and, we're tr and we're coming of age and we're trying to express it. Will power, king of the hill, now you know me, no, who like a